with us. There's nothing more important than to have a relationship with you. Father, just pray for Doug as he comes up and speaks, that we can receive it. And more importantly, I pray that you speak through him. Father, we love you, we thank you, in Jesus' name. service in an awkward moment. I had a handful of middle schoolers that when I said what we were going to talk about tonight, they had no idea what they were walking into. And uh, the looks, I heard a couple of, what? You know, coming out of the back of the rooms. And uh, so it's always, always interesting when somebody doesn't know what you're talking about when this subject shows up. Secondly, I used an illustration with a mousetrap that totally epically failed. And I almost snapped my fingers off. So we're not going to do that again. But we talked about how sin is like a mousetrap. And, and, and like a mouse sees the cheese on the mousetrap lever. It likes it. It wants it. But then when it actually gets up and bites the cheese, it whack. And, and that's how sin is. Sin can be tempting until you actually get into it. And then sin destroys your life. And uh, so is that is that my mind, guys? All right, let me switch. I'm on one. Um, so, oh, I gotta turn it on. Hold it down. The force Hello, hello. Hello. There we go. All right. Put that yeah. Woo. So, okay. So, let me get to my notes. So. Basically tonight, okay, I want, you, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to what God's Word says tonight, and I don't want you to hear what you want to hear. Does that make sense? This is one of those difficult topics for people to talk about, and that's pornography. And, we're, and tonight, we're going to look at what God's Word says about sin and how we need to avoid sin at all costs. And in this particular night, we're going, to, we're going to talk about something that is absolutely wreaking havoc in American culture right now. I'll, I'll tell you, if you'll talk to marriage and family counselors, they will tell you that half or a good number of, of the marriage counseling they do revolves around some kind of sexual sin. I, want, I had one tell me that nearly all the marital counseling that this person does at some point, pornography comes up. It is destroying families. It is destroying lives. It is destroying the people who film it and take part in it. And tonight, we're going to dive into God's Word, and we're going to talk about forgiveness. We're going to talk about what is pornography, how, why, why is it dangerous, and, and how, if you're looking at it, if maybe if you're like, on the verge of getting addicted or you're addicted, how do you break that? Okay? And we're not going to be able to dive super deep into anything because we only got a few minutes. So we're going to skip, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about being made in the image of God because we've been talking about that for three weeks now. If you haven't heard the other two sermons on this, I would get you to go to Facebook and find the Rex page and look into that and, uh, and listen to how you are made, we are all made in the image of God to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and then to be used to glorify God with our lives. And when we get, when we venture into any type of sin, but especially sexual sin, it keeps us from accomplishing the goals God has for our lives because what it does is it destroys our lives. We've talked about for three weeks now that sex is a lot like fire. That when used in the boundaries that God created, which is one man, one woman, in a lifelong marriage relationship, no, no exceptions, no ifs, ands, or buts, no exceptions of it's cheaper in college to live with your boyfriend or girlfriend, one man, one woman in a marriage relationship. It can be great. 
But when we take fire outside of the boundaries that God wants it, like if you're camping and you keep the fire in the fire pit, the fire, the, the fire in the fire pit is a great thing. But if it gets outside of that fire pit into the woods, it's going to destroy the woods. And so tonight we're going to talk about how sex is used outside of God's boundaries in a way that most, a lot of people don't think is a big deal. They don't think it harms anybody. They don't think it does any damage. And we're going to talk tonight about how pornography is absolutely destroying lives in America. It's like a silent killer of families in America right now. And it affects teenagers because it affects how you view yourself and how you treat those around you. And I'm going to tell you right now, straight up on the front end, if you're looking at pornography, it will change how you treat the opposite sex. Because pornography will rewire your brain in the same way that crack cocaine does. The synapses in your brain, it will actually rewire them. And it changes how you view yourself and how you view other people. And it will change how you treat those people. Ladies, when you're on a date with a guy, you don't want that guy looking at pornography when he's not on a date with you. Because it will change how he treats you. So we're going to look at this and we're going to dive into this for just a few minutes. So tonight what I don't want is anybody to leave here feeling beat up. I don't want anyone to leave here with any idea other than God loves you. You were created for God to have a relationship with Him and that He wants the best for your life. And I think this is a legit topic that we're talking about the last few weeks because this crowd has sustainably gotten bigger every week. Okay, so let's just kind of dive into looking at this. And the first thing we need to understand with, with pornography is that the most important thing we have in our lives are our hearts. And we have to guard our hearts. In Proverbs, God says this, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. What does that mean? That means if your heart is seeking after Christ, the things you do will honor Christ. If your heart is, is seeking after the things and sins of the world, Guess what your heart is going to, is going to be focused on? That. And you're, that's going to impact how you live. If your heart is focused on Christ, you're going to live in a godly manner and you're going to treat others in a godly manner. If your heart is focused on what you can get physically from another person, then you're going to treat that person not as the image and likeness bearer of, of God Himself, but as a subhuman species that exists to bring you physical fulfillment. And when you, take, when you treat someone in a way that is outside of God's boundaries for sex, what you're saying is that person is not worthy of God's love and God's respect, even though they were made in the image of God. It's not a victimless sin. It matters. And once you sin especially pornography and sexual sin, gets its grips around you, it will literally burn your life to the ground. It may be a slow burn, but it will get you. Matthew 15 says this, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. Therefore, we need to guard our hearts. And the, the, those things, and that is what defiles them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts. And I'll add, come godly thoughts. Because the condition of your heart directs the path of your life. Galatians 2, this isn't on the screen. We're going to have a few verses here that are on the screen. Galatians 2, 20, Paul says this. For Paul says the attitude of your heart should be this. Or the cry of your heart should be this. For I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Last week we talked about how Jesus died on the cross and paid a price for our salvation. And that we were not bought with gold or silver, but we were bought at a great price, which was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross who died in our place with our sin upon Himself. And on that, cro on that cross, when He yelled out, It is finished, He bore the full brunt of your sin upon Himself so that we could be forgiven. And Paul says that once you become a Christian, you need to understand your life is not your own. And you are to live for God and you are not to live for the world. 
And when we start to look at pornography, it begins to take our minds off the things of God. It warps how we see the world, and it changes how we treat others. It is a dangerous, dangerous game, and it is one that you need not play with at all. And if you're in the midst of a battle with pornography, you need to do everything you can to get out of it and to win it. We see how dangerous this is. Here, here is uh, Proverbs chapter 7. And just listen to me as I read this. King Solomon is sitting up on the porch of his balcony looking down over the streets of Jerusalem. He's the king of Israel, king of, of Jerusalem. He's looking down over his subjects. And, he, and this is a, 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 an episode that he describes. He says, At the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I, see, I, I saw among the simple. I noticed among them a young man a youth who had no sense. What Solomon is saying is I see this young man walking down the street and he's stupid. He may not know he's stupid, but he's stupid because I see what's about to happen and he's not smart enough to see what's about to happen. He was going down the street near her corner. What? A, a prostitute's corner. Walking along in the direction of her house at twilight as the day was fading, as the dark night set in. Then out came a woman to meet him. Dressed like a prostitute, with crafty intent. I like that word, crafty. Sinful intent. She's wanting to spend the night with him. He, she's wanting to get him in her house. Now, but she is prepared. Check this out. Then how came a dress like a prostitute? Um, she took hold of him and kissed him with a with a and with brazen attitude. She said, Today I fulfilled my vows and I have food for my fellowship offering at home. So I come out to meet you. I I look for you and have found you. I covered my bed with nice linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed. It smells good. And guess what? My husband is out of town with a lot of money, and he's not coming back for a while. So I've got lots of time just for you. And with persuasive words, she led him astray. Listen, she seduced him with her smooth talk. That's what porn is. You're curious what stuff looks like. You're curious how certain acts are done. It looks nice. You think you're going to enjoy it. It smoothly says, hey, come here. Just type these words into your browser. Hey, come here. Just type these words into Snapchat or Twitter or whatever it is you're on. Just come look at this. Just search for this on Netflix or Hulu. It's no big deal. Nobody's going to know. You can delete the search history. It begins to lead you. It begins to seduce you. And all at once he followed her. Listen, this is great. He chased after sexual sin and he became an ox going to the slaughter. He thought he was going for a good time. He thought that he was going to, to have an enjoyable experience. And what he found out is he was a stupid animal being led to the slaughter because he played with sin. Here we go. Like a deer stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his heart. Like a bird darting into a snare little knowing it will cost him his life. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say as king. Do not let your heart turn to sinful ways and stray from the path of the wise. Many, listen, many are the victims that sin has brought down. Her, she has slain many strong men. And her house is a highway to the grave leading to the chambers of death. I know that's a lot, but listen. What he's describing here is this enticing situation for this young man. And he's, and he's faced with this thing and he sees this attractive woman in front of him. And she has prepared herself for him because he just happened to be the one to walk by. But for him, she is smelling good. She is dressed nice. Her, her, she, has set the, the, she has set the vibe in her bedroom. It is Valentine's Day at her house. And she's saying, she's saying, come on in. My husband's gone. Nobody will ever know. It's just me and you. And then Solomon says, what this young man doesn't know is that he's being led to his destruction. Why? Because he's about to get taken, held, he's about to be held captive by sin. And he's about to become a victim of sex outside of God's intended boundaries. So what is porn? Porn is anything you watch, read, hear, or imagine that is used to elicit a sexual arousal outside of the person that you're married to. Now the last I checked, none of y'all are married. Okay? 
In other words, if it gets you excited, then that thing is porn for you. I don't need to explain what that means. So movies can be porn, both triple X movies and non-rated X movies. Porn can be the show that you watch on HBO or Netflix that's got some nudity in it. It can be it can be the magazine or the or the that you look at. It might not be full on nudity, but there's some nudity in it. It can be the movie you see in a movie theater that exposes someone in a, in a nude fashion. TV shows can be porn, even if they're on regular ca cable channels. If they cause you to start thinking thoughts in your head, magazines can be porn. Like I grew up in the first generation exposed to the internet. We had no idea what was getting ready to happen to us. When I was in high school, there was this thing called AOL. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. And it was, uh, the way you got on was through your phone line. Does anybody know what a home phone line is? Yeah. Very, okay, very few of you. Have you. Do you guys know what a VHS is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, um, so back when I was in elementary and middle school, the, about the only way you could view porn was going to an adult bookstore and buying a Playboy or something like that. Or going to the local Blockbuster. Anybody ever know what a Blockbuster is? Y'all know what Blockbuster is? Okay. And, uh, and in most movie rental places, there was like a back room that was separated from the rest of the store by a curtain. And that's where the sleazy guys would go. Okay? Because if you went back there, everybody else in the store was going to... Because there was there was shame in it. Then I hit high school, and this thing called the internet was invented. My probably junior or senior year in high school is when it when people started getting home computers. Thing called AOL. Then this thing called Yahoo. Y'all ever heard of Yahoo? Yeah, yeah. Yahoo was the big. That was like bigger than Google. Now nobody knows what it is, but you could go to the search engine. And you could start typing in certain phrases and start seeing pictures and videos. And my generation had no idea how to handle that. Because no, nobody had ever, I mean, it just got dropped on us. You guys do not know a time when you could not pick up an iPhone and go find whatever you wanted on the Internet. You are the first completely digital generation to where you don't know life without an iPhone you don't know life without Facebook. Even though none of y'all are on it, probably. But it's here. And everywhere you go, you're exposed to some type of porn. It's easy for you guys to find. It's no big deal for y'all to find it. But what you need to know is that it's dangerous. And it will destroy your life. You can have romantic books that can be porn. Um, so you can find it on social media. You can find it on Netflix. If you, there's all kinds. I don't even need to talk about the shows from from the paid ca cable channels that are now on Netflix. Netflix originals that have porn all up in them. There's all kinds. You can find whatever you want on Netflix. You can find whatever you want on YouTube. You can find whatever you want on Twitter and Snapchat, TikTok. You can find it. You guys live in a pornographic world, but as believers in Jesus Christ, you got to know. That part of living for Jesus is controlling what you allow into your head and into your heart. Because what you allow in will change who you are. You allow godly influences in, you will become more godly. If you allow sinful influences in, you will become more worldly. And it will change how you interact with people around you. It will change ladies. You don't want a guy that you're on, the, on a date with having a porn problem. Because he's going to treat you different than a godly guy will. Because the porn has beginning to rewire his brain. And without even knowing it, he may start treating you like the guys treat girls in those videos. Same thing, guys. Porn used to be a guy issue. Now it's a guy and girl issue. And here's the thing, some of that stuff that you see online, you don't even know what, what all's involved. A hot majority, I, I read this in an article that I was reading preparing for this, and a psychological ar uh, article. And it's like a high percentage of porn actresses have been some, through some sort of abuse.
and they're looking for a guy to show them attention, and that's how they get it. So guys, when you view those actresses, there's a good, there's a good chance they've been sexually abused, they've been raped, or they've been abandoned at some point in their life. They are a wounded individual that you are satisfying a physical desire in your life with. And you're turning them into something that God did not create them to be. Ladies, same thing. When you view those images. Guys, when you ask a girl to send you a picture that you ought not ask her to send you, you are essentially telling that young lady she is not worthy of the respect and dignity that God created her to have. Guys, if she sends you that picture without you asking or with you asking, she's essentially telling you the same thing. You are not worthy to be respected. That They are not worthy to be respected. So ladies, here's the deal. If a guy ever asks you to send him a picture, you tell him no, you tell your parents. Guys, if a girl ever sends you a picture, you delete it, you don't share it with anybody, you probably need to tell your parents. Because it's not just a moral question, it's a legal question as well. And it's a legal question that police in this community take extremely seriously. Like this sheriff's department, they don't play, y'all. That's why this is such a great place to live. Those guys and women down at the sheriff's department, they do not mess around when it comes to this stuff. But even more than that, it's a God thing. So if you're dealing with pornography, what do you do? I've got stats up here. We don't have time for all these. And they're all outdated anyway because the pandemic has caused all these things to shoot through the roof. Like used to, 40 million Americans regular, regularly visited porn sites. There's 300 million Americans. I would say it's probably 150 million Americans right now. It's crazy. You talk to psychologists, porn addictions through the roof. This says 47% of families report porn being an issue. I would say it's double that. Because here's the deal. I tell parents, parents ask me, what's the average age that a teenager will view porn? And I say, within a few months, you've given them an iPhone. In fact, the stat is age 11. I heard it. That's gross. You want to know what age a normal person views a pornographic in? image? Is age 11. That's pre that's pre pandemic. 50 percent of all divorces happen over porn. There's a everyone in this room come, comes in contact every single day with someone who's addicted to pornography. Ladies, that's just not the teenagers. Some of the adults you come in contact with are addicted to it. Guys, some of the adults you come in contact with every day are addicted to it. It's a serious issue. And it's a serious issue because God created us to be, to live our lives for something more than just the physical, sexual desire that God created us all to have and use in the right boundaries. So one, it's a big deal. Why? Because it hurts other people. Because it causes you to devalue other people. It causes those people involved in porn to devalue themselves. It hurts your relationship with God. It desensitizes your brain. Pre-pandemic, this is, this is crazy. Pre-pandemic, I read in multiple places, and I can't cite this because I don't know what I did with the articles, but I promise I read it. I, I read that the average viewing of a video, pornographic video on the internet is I want to get this right because it's disgusting where is it um, six minutes 
What that told the psychologist in the in the article was that people were looking at it at stoplights, people are looking at it in the bathroom at work, people are looking at it at work, people are looking at it in athletic stands, people are looking at it where sitting in the car waiting on their kid to come out, parent pickup. People are look six minutes, y'all. What that says is to a psychologist is that over time it desensitizes you and you need more and more and more and more to get your high. Hey, give us a minute. It gives, it gives us, it means you're, it takes less time, which means you consume more of it. And what this psychologist said is instead of watching one long video, people are bouncing from video to video to video to video to video. Like bang, 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 bang. And he says that's the prime thing of addiction. So it hurts other people, it hurts you, it hurts your future marriage. Listen, guys, I've never heard... I've never heard a married man say that he wishes he had viewed more porn before he got married. I've never heard a married man say, I wish my wife would compare me to the guys in the videos that she watched before we got married. I've never heard a woman say, I wish my, woman, my husband had viewed more porn. I've never heard a woman say, I'm glad my husband is so desensitized due to, due to pornographic videos and the images that my body means nothing to him. I've never heard one say that. You know what I've heard a lot of, though? I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I could undo the addiction. I wish this wasn't destroying my marriage. I wish this wasn't destroying my family, and I wish my teenager hadn't caught me watching that stuff. Essentially, I've never had someone tell me that watching porn and viewing porn improved their life. It's the exact opposite. Every person I've ever talked to that has an issue in this area would give just about anything to go back in time and undo it. Why? Because it has destroyed their lives because they took a, the gift of sex that God gave to be used in a marriage relationship between a man and a woman, they took it out of that boundary and it has destroyed their lives. And it's just not sexual sin, guys. It's any sin. When you allow sin to consume your life, whatever it is, it will destroy your life. Absolutely destroy it. So how do you deal with porn? First, realize it's a problem. Second, you've got to put it to death. There's a famous quote that says, you got to be putting sin to death or sin will be putting you to death. An old English revivalist once said that. It's like you've got to strive to overcome the sin in your life and do the things you can do to get it out. Now, you can't do that without the working of the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. Delete the app from your phone. Leave your phone in the living room. If you have trouble with, with looking at images at night before you go to bed, if, 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 God, if that's when you're, you're texting girls or whatever, asking them to send you, send you pictures, leave the phone in the living room. Plug it into the wall. Go to Walmart and buy a $10 alarm clock to get you up in the morning. But part of our American issue with sin is we're not willing to separate ourselves from the problem a lot of times. Leave the phone in your room. Don't randomly surf the internet. Have a purpose. The third thing is accountability. Part of putting the sin to death is accountability. And primarily, it's having an accountability partner who knows all your passwords and can look at your phone. And secondly, and this is hard, but this will help. Some of you have never had parental control of your phone. And some of you might need to take your phone and your iPad and give your passwords to your parents and say, you have, you, you've got an issue and you need help. And something that your mom or dad could do for you is to lock down that iPhone. Lock down your iPad. Lock down your computer. It can be done. And it's an awkward conversation to have. But I'm telling you right now, if my son 
when he hits middle school, ever comes to me and says that he needs help overcoming a sin, I'm going to bend over backwards and spend whatever it takes and do whatever I have to do to help him overcome that sin. Does that make sense? I'm speaking to you as a father now and not a pastor. Very, very few parents wouldn't want you to come to them when you need help. And I'm begging you to get the help if you need it so you're not in my office five years down the road when your life is unraveling and it's been blown up because you're addicted to a sin that you were never intended to be addicted to. Because at that point, it's not controlling it. It's dealing with the fallout. Does that make sense? There comes a time where you don't control the sin. You don't put it to death because it has blown up in your life and you've got to deal with it. Finally, allow God to heal you and transform you. See, we, we talk about overcoming sin in the church all the time. And we talk about, you need to overcome sin. You need to put it to death. But man, in the Baptist church, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, that starts to scare people. Why? I think the Holy Spirit is dangerous, y'all, in a good way. Because when you turn to God and you begin to ask God to heal you and give you strength and to change your heart, to change your mind, to change your attitude on the subject, the Holy Spirit, if you're a Christian, begins to work in your life. And it begins to refine and begins to mold you. And the more and more that you read your Bible, the more and more that you pray, the more and more that you join a small group and do the things that you need to do to grow in your walk with Jesus, God will begin to mold your heart and change your attitudes. And I'm telling you, it can be uncomfortable. It can be awkward. It can be painful. But when on the back end, it's so worth it. It is so worth it. Because there's a freedom that comes with living in Jesus and knowing that you don't have the secret baggage that is weighing you down and allowing Him to free you from sin. It may be pornography. It may be an eating disorder which needs medical help. It may be, it may be, a, it may be a gossip issue. It may be a lying issue. It may be a whatever it is, cheating issue at school. When you give that over to God, and you say, Jesus, I need you to help me. I need you to heal me. I need you to restore me and allow me to be the person that you created me to be. That's when God can work in your life. That's when God heals you. That's when God changes you. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't care what sin it is, you will never overcome it until you surrender it to the foot of the cross in Jesus Christ. And when you give yourself to Christ, He begins to form you and mold you into the person that He wants you to be. And that comes in two ways. One is you've got to be saved. And if you're not saved, you're not going to be healed. Because for Jesus to work in your life, for Jesus to heal you, you have to be a child of His. Which means you have to surrender your life to Him and ask for His salvation to change your life and forgive you of your sin and reconnect you to your, to, to your Heavenly Father. And when you come to the place in life where you say, I know I'm separated from you, God, and I know you died on that cross for me, and I need you to save me, to forgive me of my sin, to wipe it away, and to be my Lord and Savior, you become a child of God like that in an instant. Jesus no longer looks at you. God no longer looks at you and sees the sin in your life. He looks at you and sees the blood of His Son Jesus that has covered you and forgiven you and washed away your sin. Then, once you're a Christian, once you have had your sin washed away, once you have been forgiven of your sin, God can sanctify you, which is a fancy word for making you the person that He wants you to be. And it is here as a Christian when you get caught up in sin that God can begin to change your heart and begin to heal you and begin to grow you. So two questions with sin tonight. Are you a, are you a Christian? If you are not a Christian, I would invite you to talk to somebody before you leave here tonight. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. It also says, though, you need to tell somebody about that decision. Like, you're, like Christianity, religion, 
is a private matter, but it's a public matter as well. And when you make a decision for Christ, you need to tell somebody about it. So talk to an adult if you want to get saved tonight. Secondly, if you're a Christian and you're dealing with a sin in your life, whether it be pornography or something else, turn that over to God and allow God to work in your life. Allow God to cleanse you and to mold you into the person that He wants you to be. Because I'm telling you guys, don't bear your sin by yourself. Allow Christ to bear it for you. But if you have an issue with pornography, fix it. Ladies, if you're dating somebody that has an issue with pornography, you need to end it now. Guys, if you're dating a girl and she's got an issue with pornography, you need to end it now. And you need to fix that. I don't have a daughter. But I expect, if I had a daughter, I would expect any guy to treat her in a godly manner. I do have sons. I have three sons. And I put the same standard on the girls that I put on the guys. Ladies, you should treat those guys with honor. Get off the pornography. Don't send the photo. Because here's the deal, ladies. He's, he's just going to share it. He's just going to share it. About five or six years ago, there was a girl in this youth group. She had a new picture in every high school in Bay County. She had no idea it was in every high school in Bay County. She didn't know about it until she graduated college, or high school. When I was in Baton Rouge at Parkview Baptist Church in school, there was a freshman girl at a homecoming dance, took a picture and sent it to her boyfriend at the dance. Within a few days, it was in every single high school in East Baton Rouge Parish. Private, public, charter, it was in all of them. And she knew it. I don't care how much that person says they love you. Once it's over, that picture is going everywhere. So allow God to heal you. Have nothing to do with sin. Don't touch it. Don't mess with it. Don't see how if you're how far is too far? That's not the question. The question is how do I best honor God? Not what can I get away with. Not will will anybody and it's secret, nobody will ever know about it. How do you best honor God with your life? If you need to talk, we can talk after this. I'm going to pray. Father God, we love you and we ask that you would be with us. Next week, Stephen Sims is going to come up here and if he does what I think he's going to do, everybody in the, in the house is going to be rolling next week. It's going to be hilarious. But God, tonight, we're asking a serious, serious questions about ourselves and I would pray that you would raise up a generation of teenagers who live for you without shame and with complete boldness. Because God, a group of teenagers that will have sexual ethics that line up with the Word of God, they will stand out. And they will stand out in such a way that others want to know why they're different. And they may make fun of them, but deep down they're going to want that same ethic. Because as much as people say they enjoy sleeping around, they don't. They don't. I've had enough. I used to believe people enjoyed it. And then I became a pastor. And I've seen the people that come through my office. They don't enjoy it. Because it's sin. It's not what we're supposed to do. And it tears us down. And it destroys our lives. So just help us to confront sin with your word and with your spirit. And we pray that you would allow us to bow down at the foot of the cross and ask you to mold us into the people that you have called us to be in all areas of our life. But I just lift up the people in this room, God. There is an army in this room for you. And I pray, God, that they would continue to be bringers and ask the question of who is my one and they would, and, and as it starts to warm up, I just pray that those that baptistry is getting used out underneath the pavilion, because we're seeing people get saved. It's not about draw, drawing crowds; it's about changing lives under the power of your Holy Spirit. So give us the boldness and the strength to do what we need to do for you, God. We love you and we praise you in your name. Amen. Hey, love you guys. It's always awesome to see you. Good night.
count. Where's the doors? I think we had 57 middle scores. So I'm going to go find out what the count was. Uh, let's do that. If they're legit or if they're inflated. 
because of what we were talking about. I think every single time we do pink and blue, it's inflated. But after, for like that month or two after, more people are coming. But it's not going to be everyone that was here for pink and blue. Yep. Yep. I think we'll stay close to numbers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll lose a lot of people. I, I think don't we're think just it's going to go down hugely. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to go down huge, but it's. It, I'm always curious to see, like, okay, it's off now. Let's sit down. Um, I'm anxious to see what will happen. Steven Sims is going to speak next week, and it should be pretty hysterical. What's um, he speaking on? I think he's talking about he did a, a really good job being time. a toxic person, I think is what he's going I wasn't on. here last time, so I'm oh interested to really hear him. He just, he like, really grabs a Jimmy job. John sandwich in the middle of it. Yeah, like, literally, literally out of nowhere. Literally out started. of nowhere, he just grabs a Jimmy John sandwich and just starts eating it. And I was like, I, I want a Jimmy John sandwich. Where's mine? Can we, like, have, like, rec-wide uh, Jimmy John sandwich tonight? Like, I love that. Yeah, that 